Hi, welcome to Ole Wave Paper Reading Channel. Today, we're going to be reading another speech and NLP paper. Its title is Zip Former A Faster and Better Encoder for Automatic Speech Recognition. Here is the summary. I think the biggest benefit it brings to the speech recognition community is that they have proposed a first of all faster and more memory efficient and third better performing i mean lower wer transformer based asr encoder they call that transformer and comparing uh, compared to the conformer that was uh, uh prevailed and they they com they have uh, beaten the conformer, and it, I think they also uh, stashed a bunch of innovation points in this paper. According to my reading, uh, I ranked uh, the importance of this innovation in the descending order. First, scaled atom is very very important in uh, getting the. WER reduction they mentioned. This is the most, most important. And secondly, they proposed swoosh R and the swoosh L. Well, I think according to the results, this is the second most important. And also they uh, redesigned the, the block structure. Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, this was based on, or they also mentioned that this was based on some unit shaped model. I think lots of you may um, you may be familiar with this uh, architecture. It's called a uh, squeeze farmer. Squeeze farmer is also unit shaped, but they made some changes in it. For example. Um, the the points that they did was nonlinear attention, and also uh, they use multi-head attention weights, other than multi-head, other than multi-head self attention. Uh, th this all helped them to make their model more efficient, AKA less amount of parameter, but they're training more faster and they can train deeper neural network models. And uh, I think this is the least important. Um, they propose something called a bias norm. Uh, it's really new uh, comparing to the layer norm, but I will cover everything. So this, this is the most important, the second, the third important thing and the fourth important thing. All right, let's move on. And first of all, I think lots of you are wondering out, uh, you said this model is fairly good. Uh, what do you mean? So I think for those of you who are familiar with uh, my YouTube channel and watched uh, lots of videos of mine, you might be familiar with uh, the Libre Speech data set. Uh, and they have, I usually only look at Tesla Clean, uh, yeah. And that they are um, the first people, amount of people uh, reach the 2.0 without language model, okay. I think ASAP, ASAP achieved the 1.7 something in terms of WER with a very sophisticated uh, language model. But they managed it uh, by using the zip former and a modified loss, and they get 2.0, which was very impressive. And if you look at their model size, uh, their model size is not the largest, if you can see this. And uh, compared to the conformer, okay, conformer wise, these are the results report, reported by Google. They did reach something 2.1, but 
But I, I have to say that during the past four years, people have tried to replicate their results. And the best or the most close group of people who published the result were the people from ESPNet. They only get 2.29. You can see this is at least a 10% behind the number reported by Google, 10% behind. And also, uh, Dr. Pauvi and his colleagues, they also uh, re-implement everything of the conformer. And they did apple-to-apple -apple comparison by using the same loss function they use, the proof transformer, uh, the proof transducer. And they have shown that, OK, um, I think this is not purely apple-to-apple, -apple, but you can see that uh, the model only get 2.46. and uh, this is almost 20% behind the zip former. Okay, this is a huge gain, huge uh, reduction in WR. So I think um, if you have watched it to this, I think everybody should read their zip former paper and uh, download their toolkit. Um, what do you call that? It's called a K2FSA on GitHub. I believe they have released their source code a long time ago. Everybody should try this, okay? All right, I'm gonna go start from introduction to give a um, more detailed analysis or my point of view on this paper. Um, but if you can keep watching, thank you, because I'm gonna bring some of my own thoughts to you and I have about 20 years of experience on ASR. I don't think you can get uh, the review you can get from me comparing to some articles written by some uh, medium authors or Gong uh, Zhonghao authors, OK? Please be patient with me. Um, all right, I think I finished the introduction. Well, before I start, I think um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Dr. Dan Povey. Uh, I'm a big fan of this, his, to be honest. I've been started to follow his work since 2005. Um, I think at that time, everybody knows his uh, PhD work, minimum foam error rate. Uh, for ASR training, well, that's a loss function. Um, and also later on, he proposed a uh, feature FM, uh, feature uh, minimum foam error rate in terms of the loss function in 2005. And what this that was awesome. But back then, um, speech people do not like to open source their their stuff. So at that time, people had difficulty in replicating his results, but nobody doubt he managed, managed to achieve that uh, excellent result uh, because his paper talked for himself. Um, I think back in 2011 or 12, maybe, maybe 2013-ish, uh, because the, the success of successfulness of the neural networks and Dr. Paul, started start to write a toolkit with his uh, friends. His, his name, probably everybody knows, is Caldi. And uh, recently, uh, they have uh, shifted to uh, another toolkit, which is uh, K2FSA. And uh, lately, I think, I think he was inspired by lots of researchers who work in the neural network architecture and also learning rates. He and his colleague uh, worked out this super well-performing Zipformer. And you can see that I just mentioned that it supersedes the conformer model uh, char charted by Google by almost 20%. And the, this is really, uh, so I, I, in my opinion, this is a really worthwhile reading paper 
for people who want to work on speech recognition. So I'm going to start. For the related works, I don't th think I have time to read all of them, but uh, if you find anything, I think I do not have Squeeze Farmer yet. I don't have Squeeze Farmer yet, but this is a more like a U-shaped structure. Um, I think this was borrowed by computer vision people, and it's fairly easy to understand. For the other ones, uh, even for the uh, branch former and each branch former, I have paper readings on them. Um, uh, improvements, I think, uh, John Addo, uh, I think maybe I have read this too. Um, I think I read lots of people, especially conformer. I think I'm the uh, only people on this internet have uh, read the conformer paper line by line. So if you're really interested in a conformer, you can check this because this was specially designed for speech recognition, okay? I have this in my channel. Okay. End-to-end -end framework. Um, right. I will give you a quick, a uh, quick go, go through of this. Um, this was by Dr. Alex Graves back in 2006. Uh, six. And then later on is also him. He proposed something called a Recurrent neural network transducer. No, that's not the uh, Google guys proposed. This is uh, like uh, different than the the RN uh, LSTM based RN and stuff. This is more like the how to turn one sequence into another sequence uh, for speech recognition. And later on, I also have this uh, paper reading. Interesting. I have this, and I also have this. This is William Chen. I think uh, people nowadays everybody call that this AED, but this indeed uh, at that time people or especially Google people like to call this LAS, listen, attend, and spell. Uh, this is a famous uh, work by Professor Watanabe. Uh, this uh, you can find this work uh, or his source code in the toolkit called ESP.NET. Uh, so because uh, he used uh, the joint loss function, CTC plus AED, a CTC plus cross entropy to improve uh, the performance by making their training more faster and more stable. Okay. Yeah, the pruning works. Um, I didn't, I think pruning works are mainly done by Dr. Povey and his colleagues. Um, because I think nowadays, um, not a lot of people are using this pruning loss. But according to the results I just shown, the pruning does work. So you might want to check those papers. I don't have paper reading on this. So they prof um, before we start, uh, let's go over the conformer structure really quickly because he mentioned the, the conformer uh, which process the sequence at a fixed frame rate. Why did you see that? Yeah, because if you look at the structure, if you look at the structure here, you can see there's only one subsampling happening here, which goes from 10 milliseconds of frame rate to 40, second, uh, 40 milliseconds of frame rate, which is equivalent to 25 hertz. That's what they are talking about here. And be beyond this, you see everything was sampled at 40 milliseconds rate or 25 hertz. And the rate, uh, the frame, frame rate doesn't change after that. Uh, and they use, ZFormer use a U, unit like structure. Um, if I can see that, you can see from here. Um, what, why do they say this is a UNet? Because you can see this. The sampling frequency or the fr frame rate first go up, or the sampling frequency first go down, 
and then go up a little bit. You see what I'm saying? This is from bottom to top, and this is the, 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 the frequency, okay, sampling frequency. And that, that's the U, where the U comes from. And there's some, of course, uh, you can see every time they have, uh, for every, between each, you know, um, blocks, I mean block because you can see this is a zip former blocks. You can see within each uh, blocks or groups, the sampling rate is fixed. But how do you uh, make the different sampling groups to be compatible, right? Because you cannot send a 50 hertz sampled uh, input into a 25, 25 hertz uh, sampled group. So they did they did a down sample. Down sample was very simple. They just take uh, take every other sample, and also because they have to uh, send the information back to the up sample because you can see that you can see this is a bypass loop. Let me draw this for you. This is the bypass loop, right? Bypass loop is always operated at 50 hertz. Why? This is to prevent the gradient from diminishing, right? Bypass. And this is always operated at 50 hertz. And you have to, here, you have to up sample from 25 hertz to 50 hertz. What they do is they just simply uh, duplicate uh, every, you know, duplicate one sample after another one, okay? And then you can see here, they done sample by four times, up sample by, um, by four times, I think, right? Um, that's what they talk about. And also you might I explain the down sample, right? And also I explain the up sample. Now the bypass sample, which is easy to understand. Let me jump to here. You can see uh, this is Y coming in. And this is the uh, the left to right neural network input X. It all comes to here, and they this loop is C, and this loop is Y minus C. This is the dot. So why why would they use uh, the vector right? Because the X is a vector, right? Um, this is the bypass loop. Not bypass module is easy to understand. So initially, uh, they want to limit the value C. So this almost goes to zero. Okay. Initially, but in the end, I think they increase the increase. Wait a second, I'm wrong. So initially they put the value of C to be very close to one. I think they can accelerate the training, but in the end they are trying to make the C value or steps. C value to go lower and lower, right? They, they have a 20k steps, right? It becomes to minimum 0 0.2, right? So the bypass weight is getting very little, right? Am I right? Oh, I'm wrong again. I think uh, I mistook the, the y and x so here is the y here is the x initially they said uh, uh what is one minus c sorry so you follow my uh thoughts okay so initially this is c is still one but nothing gets from get through or in the beginning right so everything was just a feed forward no bypass loop 
At the end, everything, um, most of the things are from bypass or only a few things coming from the network. Okay. What else? Finish the bypass. Now I think it's time to go into the zip former block. Before we go to the zip former block, let's quickly overview what does the uh, conformer do? Conformer block do. Okay. And this is a standard spectral augmentation. It uh, rotate, squeeze, not rotate, sorry. Squeeze, uh, stretch um, the uh, audio in time, time, and they squeeze and stretch the audio in frequency domain, and they also do some warping. <sighs> okay, um, and the, sorry, they have done some masking, masking, not warping. Um, and they, that is a linear transformation, they drop out and it comes to a conformer block. You can see this is n conformer box, uh, identical conformer blocks. And you can see there are two, sorry, two feed forward models on the top and bottom. And they have this layer norm and they have the multi self, multi head self attention on the bottom, and they have a convolution module on top of that. And there are bypass, uh, bypass uh, of each module. module. And the, this model comes from the Macron net. Macron, yes, the French president or the dessert name, French dessert. Because you can see that this is like the bun. And this, these are like the colorful stuffing between the two buns. Okay, this is like more like a Macron, and the, this come from Macron net um, from computer vision. Okay. All right, let's go back to our uh, zip former. Okay. Um, you can see there are still feed forward at the beginning and and the end right and the, the layer norm is being replaced by bias norm or nor, nor, norm how do i say norm norm okay replaced only thing that uh, and you can see convolution doesn't change But the interesting thing is that there are two convolution, and you can see that um, actually I missed uh, this feed forward here. Uh, so different than the macro net, they have two feed forward la layer and the one convolution layer and the multi head attention self attention layer in the middle. They have three feed forward layer, right? Do you call this super Macron? It's not double cheeseburger or because I think Macron does not have a bun in the middle. It's always a sweet uh, stuffing in the middle. Okay. Uh, they have this and you can see they indeed duplicate this part and this part. Am I right? They have two sub attention, two convolutional neural networks. What they added? Yeah, they added this nonlinear attention, and also different than uh, the self attention use multi head self attention used in the conformer. they used the self-attention which the query was being provided by a shared attention weights you can pause the video to see whether uh, this type of uh, attention weight will reduce the self-attention's uh, computational complexity okay the answer is it's not um because of why because anyhow, this is self-attention. Self-attention is always, the, the, the complexity is also always quadratic. 
but by by using a shared weights okay they first they reduce the model size because you don't have multiple copies of weights right and they also uh, increase the training speed because you'd only have to keep one one uh, states optimize the states for these attention weights you don't have to keep multiples of them um, this is very interesting to me um, I before he did this I don't know um, sharing the weights can indeed help the, the ASR to get lower WER uh, because I didn't see people do this and also uh, according he, to his numbers, the nonlinear attention is important. Because why? Before I, uh, I think I was gonna uh, jump into the nonlinear attention now. So here is their uh, flow chart. Um, you can see this is the input. Um, you can imagine this is more like a Q. This is like K, and this is like a V. And you may ask, oh, wait, oh, is this Q? No, this is not Q. This is more like a gate. Why? Because after the X, uh, I'll put through this, let's call that M. I don't want to call that Q, okay? Uh, X times M would be passed through a tangent, right? This is more like, uh, more like a uh, activation. So it's either um, it became a scaling factor um, to the input of k. So this is a scaled. How do I say that? Um, I think it would be um, something like this, right? The correct wrap wrong. So so this complexity is still uh, linear over here okay it doesn't go to quadratic here but attention weights um i think i will call this a um this is not self-attention here right um but you can if you want to be make an analogy to the self-attention this would be the q here of course this is not a q okay but it, you can make an analogy here uh, this is the q because this is a matrix where you we do this with this. This is called single head attention. Then your complexity would go up to quadratic again. And then you uh, dot product. Uh, no, you multiply with the, the V, okay? That's the same as the dotted scale, dotted, a uh, scale the dotted attention, right? Dotted self attention. Uh, yeah, self attention is called a. Uh, dot pro, uh, scale the dot pro, uh, let me write it here so this is why self attention is also called scaled dotted product attention okay uh, so you can see this part doesn't it doesn't reduce com uh, computational complexity but also added this <laughs> this block um, but the efficient thing efficient uh, efficient thing was that they shared the tension weights like i mentioned it became faster and in the end i want to mention that uh, you can see uh, from every every module's input to output there is a bypass you can see right Bypass, 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 bypass. Yeah, no, no, no exception. And uh, there is a what do you call that? Uh, a bigger bypass. Okay, I don't know what's the right word for this. Let me use the blue pen here. Bigger bypass here. From here to this, right? And they have an even bigger bypass from here to here. Right? This was probably different than the conformer. Let's take a look. So conformer does not have this uh, a bypass from here to here. 
No. No bypass from here to here, but the farmer does have this. Um, okay, um, so I I saved your cost of reading the text line by line. Now I want to um, bias norm. I think bias norm is very difficult to understand, but I will uh, read the text to you probably. First of all, they talk about, they're saying that that's the key, right? We just wanna, the take home message is that the, the Dr. Povey uh, and his colleagues thought this conformer use layer norm, um, but the layer norm uh, was trying to Forget about the length of the length information of X. So, or the number of channels in the X. Okay. And what, what, what's the word here? Yeah, that's the problem. They are talking about the problem um they sometimes they said just one channel your large constant value for example 50. um yeah that's the and this is what dr Povey thought the layer norm does they're saying that he's he's saying that layer norm would uh, fully remove the vector length functioning as a very large value so so the, yeah that's what the layer norm does and uh, based on his observation he uh, he pitched the, his um theory because of this the the blue line underlined text the the the, the observed the phenomena was because the layer norm try to uh, functioning as a very large value so the length information could be retained interesting after normalization it's interesting that okay uh, even the layer norm try to forget about the vector length but the lear learning your, your learning is keeping uh, forcing the trainer to remem remember the length information um, that's the first one and to resolve the this uh, i think he you can see he removed the mean part right the expectation is gone here and uh, he doesn't do the 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 lens normalization again lens normalization so it doesn't do the normalization like people do here this is normalization right uh, he used the rms rms here the equation let me write the equation for you this is like um d over x x i minus b i and this is i from one to d and this is this is all scalar everything was scalar here and you have uh, the square root all right right better and so by doing this and also b as he mentioned that this is a large constant value so i think what he talked about is that okay i don't want you your model to learn something that's or spend your effort learning something that i know okay so he just uh, uh, put his uh, prior knowledge or his expert knowledge uh, from observing and he just set that the bias b as a large constant value is a constant so the model won't doesn't have to learn this okay so i think it reduced the, the model size or something right and also this is the first thing um the second thing is that uh, some modules are dead and they have extremely small output. I think this is easier to understand uh, because uh, it's, it's, 
it's making sense to me. I understand this. So if the layer norms scale goes to zero and the, the inconsistent well, consistent reverse gradient directions, makes sense, right? Beta is a bias, so beta won't affect the gradient. So if this goes to zero and goes to the positive and negative, so frequently in between these uh, training steps, then you see the gradient flip from positive to negative, positive to negative, very frequently, see, very frequently, and you can see the updated uh, parameters are keeping o oscillating, right? Up and down, up and down, up and down uh, across the steps. That's what he meant. Um, to prevent this, he <laughs> said this. So this is always greater than zero. Uh, so there's nothing you have to worry about that. That's what he basically do. We'll uh, talk about the results in the future, okay? And later on, he uh, talk about the swoosh. A conformer, uh, a conformer uses the the swish swish activation. What does the swish activation look like? But but we but let's let's take a look at what he proposed first. This is swish by conformer, and he tries to propose this swoosh r and swoosh l what does it look like on the um, no yeah um i don't want to draw anything okay the this one is swish so according to dr pam Polvey, he said you can see this swish for x being negative, if the x is very large and the, 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 the switch value would go to zero or almost zero. So this, he said that this is a uh, issue. The issue is uh, your training or your update of uh, your model may be stuck at here because your zero output cannot can go nowhere, right? Um, you want to have a negative value like the swoosh R and swoosh L to go out of uh, this uh, what do you call it? the trap or the the don't the region that you don't want to be in, right? Okay, you you if this is a negative, your X is capable of moving towards the other direction, right? And if it is x is too big, it, it can go this direction. But if this is a zero, you're gonna be just uh, stuck in there. Make sense? And this swoosh r, uh, I think swoosh r and swoosh l and the swoosh, they all pass at zero. Um, but the interesting thing is that the, the minimum of the swoosh Oh, this is swish. Uh, yeah. So you can see the the minimum of swoosh r is located x. Hap, the minimum happens to x smaller than zero, and the swoosh l happens that the minimum uh, happens when the x is greater than zero. That's the difference. But their shape is same. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to Swish, L, and R. I didn't read um, a lot of papers on the uh, activation function. I don't know whether this is the first proposed by Dr. Dampolvi, um, but he did mention the scale atom optimizer. I think this is a very important. Uh, it took me some time to understand this. I think this section is definitely 100% written by Dr. Porvi. Uh, why? <laughs> because I've uh, read his paper on natural gradient gradient paper. Just searched his paper. 
natural gradient for ASR or thumbprint. Okay, for ASR training. Uh, it's this part is way easier to understand compared to the this paper, uh, but it's still not very straightforward. Um, first of all, he talked about Adam. Because you can see his work is based on Adam. It's an advanced version of Adam claimed by him. Um, that Adam is uh, f of theta to be the loss function. And uh, the gradient is called uh, g sub t at the time, at the step t, okay? And then you compute the first moment and you get the second moment and the and this is the bias correction term. And this is the, uh, the core part of the atom. And alpha is the learning rate. Makes sense? That's, that's the atom. If you don't understand it, you have to check the, the atom paper, OK? Um, but Dr. Pam then probably mentioned that um, he, he raised the issue of the atom. Remember this, this is very important. Atom is a variant to gradient scale of each parameter. So Dr. Paul we th thought, okay, I would argue they still suffer, suffers from the following two limitations. The first is that it does not take into account the primary scale, what does that mean? Uh, so sometimes the primary is very small, okay? Like in the range of the primary neural network model parameter, what I mean here is the neural network parameter. Some is very small. Let's say the primary is in the range of zero minus two-ish, okay? Sometimes it's very large. Let's say it's like in a 10 to the two, okay? This is called small, small scale and a large scale, okay? And then you can see this. The primary update has nothing to do with this, right, okay? It doesn't take into the primary scale into consideration. But some people may argue that, okay, you have the batch norm, layer norm, it should normalize the neural network parameters. But, but I think sometimes even you do the normalization, your parameter can still get very small. That's my experience. Um, because um, lots of time the model parameter during the learning wants to go to zero because I think that's my own interpretation. Uh, the, the training, wants to remove that arc, okay? Remove that number in the matrix, make it to be zero. So they, they try to make the primary as small as possible. So it's likely that even if you normalize the primary, the primary can still get very small, close to zero. And the atom does not reflect uh, this primary scale issue. So I think it's easy, common to Think about, okay, I want to do the scaling by using this uh, delta t over rt minus 1. Okay. Um, a second thing is that it's difficult to learn this parameter scale, which is rt, r sub t1, t minus 1. It's difficult to learn this directly because the direction of growing or shrinking primary sensor is a very specific direction in large dimensional space. And it's particularly difficult to shrink a parameter since each gradient step, g sub t adds noise, which tends to grow the primary norm. That makes sense? Well, I think Dr. Paul explained it. I, I can't do better than him, so I just read his text. <laughs> So here it comes to the gradient update. So you can see everything is the same as equation five in equation six. The only thing added is by this. And then you have uh, 
the other T prime. And how do you calculate this primary scale? It's easy, right? <laughs> you just use RMS. But don't forget, it has nothing to do with T, okay? It only has uh, to do with the channel scale, the scale of the values in each channel of the uh, parameter. Let me write this for you, okay? have this that's it right uh, and that they also in a uh, developed a, a learning rate is called add-in um, I will cover that in the following one it doesn't need a long warm-up period uh, it also use a learning rate learning rate because yeah RML value is usually much less than one so you use a large so alpha T gets larger because to compensate the issue of the RT minus one um and now of course you can say wait um why do we need this uh because i think then probably also mentioned that in the future pages that um what he want is that he wants the learning rate or the learning rate schedule does not have to be changed when changing one data set from another data set because i can see that um, occasionally or frequently, commonly, uh, people are arguing that, okay, this learning rate only work for this case, but if you work on something else, you have to tune up the learning rate schedule or learning rate or uh, learning rate scales, those scales from the beginning. That's a waste of time. Uh, and Dr. Bobby was trying to talk about the uh, the inherent mechanism under the learning rate and try to find a schedule that is a variant to the gradient scale of each parameter. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, about the math theater, I think it's easy to understand. Um, let me quickly go over that with you. Okay. They said this would be this and, uh, H sub T to be the gradient of the parameter scale R. So you can say H equal H T equals to this, right? That's what they write. And this, you can change this into R times what? It T minus one, right? And this is equivalent to this. Times uh times um this. You get this? Mm -hmm. And I think oh, they use the change rule here. Huh? I prefer to write this. This is G sub T, right? And this, this is this. Am I right? Like yeah, this, right? Um, and then, because this is nearly invariant to change the gradient scale, so they did some uh, approximation. Uh, they just, uh, Approximation here is the GT times
Yeah, because you just add this, right? You got this. Why? Why do you get this? You will see that in the future. Uh, he did a beautiful um, uh, approximation, so which be, is useful in the future. Um, following the Adam algorithm, and you can also ca calculate the momentum of the primary scale and the second momentum of the primary, primary gradient primary scale, um, and then they caused the change on the primary from updating the primary scale from this to this is this. Sorry. So you can see, um, so, so what he meant here is that the primary theta is being affected by two gradients, okay? The first gradient is uh, G sub T, right? It's, prop it's, it's atom, right? The second factor that's affecting the model primary theta is the h of t. It's the gradient from their, their scale, scale of the um, atom or something. And this delta t sub r, of course, this happens, or this is given the condition of g sub t. Understand this, right? And you update this, and you got this, this, and it, similar to equation six, and you write a, this is caused by G sub T, you can understand. And this is caused by H of T, right? And you use the, the momentums from H of T. Make sense? Because these are from the G sub T. These are from H sub T. And this is the same bias factor, nothing changed. And the scaling factor, the learning rate, uh, the scale, a uh, learning rate, and the eta is a scale on the learning rate. Um, I'm, I have to say that I'm a little bit confused that why do they need another scaling factor here? But it seems that this scaling factor has something to do with, uh, that's, my, that's my understanding, okay? They have to use a learning rate uh, scaler because they made this, uh, uh, this here, right? They go from this to this. This is a scale. So you have to compensate that or something. That's my understanding. Or maybe they want to use the same learning rates as the, uh, the, the alpha t here. So they actually, they actually meant this is actually a new alpha t, but they don't want to say this has to be, or they think that this indeed it doesn't have to be tuned, only has to be scaled. Okay, it's, it's different than you have to tune this learning rate from beginning. You only have to have a constant, constant scaling factor, which is 0 0.1 in their case. All right, this one, this one, yeah, this one. And this one is easy, easy to understand um, because you can see this is this times this that makes sense and this one moves to here and this one correspond to them why let me say one more thing if you're not familiar with adam so adam is trying to estimate uh, what the r sub t should be after the update so your starting point is r t T minus one, so RT is equivalent
uh, I think it's this one. If you write this one, this would be uh, easier to understand. Okay, so the the, the next step uh, for the current step, it goes from the period step, and you use the 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 gradient times the parameter's current value. Okay, this is the gradient. This is the value. And this is the current. This is next. So this is a basic idea that using Adam. So the, he uh, just listed here, and this this part is corresponding to this part. This part is corresponding to this part. I hope you understand. Okay, then um, I say he did some beautiful things. Yeah. Um, he did some beautiful and then he just merged these rt temp by one times this and they you get the these two they combine them and they get this so then the uh, this is beautiful he doesn't have to calculate the theta prime at the step t minus one. He just have to use the the theta t minus one as uh, the original Adam, right? Okay, and the, in the end, uh, like I said, the parameters change is caused by two factors. He just have to add this and this. If you are still not getting that, you can check the equation at uh, the appendix section. Let me see if I can draw it. No, I can't jump to there. Interesting. Uh, it's very clear. It's what I said. And the add-in schedule um, wise, hmm. he raised the issue here is that um, Yeah, he he raised the issue again. Drawing. So the schedule parameters should not have to be retuned if we change the best size. So the add is to to make the the schedule parameters do not have to be changed. Okay, that's a a a small innovation. Architecture, I think you will read yourself. Implementation details. And this is about liberty speech data set. And this is a general overview of how his uh, zip former compared to the others. You can see this is way better. Way better. Oh, this talk about the peak memory usage. Let's see that for the large size. Didn't know the E branch farmer would use such amount of memory compared to other other models. And this is the inference time. So you can see on average, this is like a I only check the large model, okay? Large model is like at least a two times faster. Uh, memory wise, I think this is like a two to four times better faster okay that proved what he said um i think i've covered this um the squeeze farmer this is the each branch farmer yeah i covered this wr part or win a speech. Uh, I don't think these methods um, differ much, uh, differs from each other very much on the win a speech data set. Um, my personal understanding, understanding is that people do not usually 
uh, extensively tuned uh, ASL data set because I my understanding is that it only has 200 hours of training data. It's a very small data set. You know, it's, it doesn't worth it, you know, to spend so much effort on that. Uh, and also, there's not a lot of, not all, everybody works on Chinese. So, but at least this model does not get any worse than the other, the ours, okay? I think, and also I think they should have to have fair comparison because this model is uh, three times bigger than the published result. You should get some similar result, similar size models. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the similar size models, for example, this one is, is small, they're small. And this one is similar, right? 4.5 and 4.4 are not very different from each other. Uh, this is a WinNet speed data set. Uh, this is a relatively large data set. It's 10K hours of data set. Uh, but I have my personal uh, opinion about the data, data set. The ground truth has not be, been carefully verified, especially for the training set. Um, and then it's not very large enough uh, if you are saying that, okay, I use sort of a weak labels like the whisper model whisper model use the weak label for training uh, here i managed to use either asr results or some uh, and in, i intensively checked the uh, transcription for training but I, I think if somebody can get this data set to 100k hours yeah that's better and also let me tell you that's better. Not not that not people people have not done this yet. And talk about Whisper in their version three, they have increased their Trini data set size to about three million hours, which is well three hundred times than the Whisper uh, than the WinNet data set. Okay. I think I'm right, 200 times. So uh, it's really a small data set compared to this that Whisper uses. Uh, but it's still bigger than the Libre speech data set. This is like 10 times bigger than the Libre speech data set. Um, talking about the result, you can see that it performs really well. On it, I think it lifts up the, uh, the WinNet uh, benchmark to a new scale, new, new, new standard. Um, Especially the test net is approaching seven percent. Approaching seven percent. It's the first time they get under eight percent. Ablation study. This is interesting. Um, I I hope you know, if you are a researcher, this is more like a, my thoughts or discussion. And if you read this paper and you, 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 you also have some thoughts on this and you, you come to my um, video and you, you listen to me talking about this and you have, you want to discuss with me, uh, send me an email, send me a message. Uh, if you have a different opinion, comment on the comment section. This is for our discussion. It doesn't mean that my opinion represents the author's uh, thoughts or you just have to listen to what I said. No, no, it's a, a more uh, like the discussion. Uh, first, I think if you look at the Tesla claim, the numbers are very close. I got uh, really, um, I think a lot of them are probably some uh, deviation, deviations in those numbers. For example, 2 point, point 0.21, point 0.23, which one's better and which one's not. Uh, so I think the author discussed all on the test other, okay? So the baseline is like 4.79 and you hit this ablation study that when every line, uh, especially in color block, these type of things, it, they took one innovation from their system and used the baseline, okay? And you, you can see the, the biggest drop in the ASR, the number one drop is Adam. So this is why I say, According to the results, scale atom 
is the most important innovation in their paper because you see this one dropped 4.8 to 5.5. This is almost like, like a, to me, this is like 15% drop. And also the second most important thing according to their results is the swish a swish R and a swish L. Because if you use swish, it came almost to 4.3. Um, I think it is like a 10 to 15% drop. And it's interesting that if they only use swish R, they, they still get 10% drop. Um, then I got confused because uh, our quote, maybe I didn't read the paper uh, carefully, but I do not understand uh, the difference between the switch at R and L. Um, block structure, activation function. You see, um, their, their explanation was Yeah. They use the swish L for normally off modules. Oh, I think they, they mentioned somewhere. Um why why they have the how they use the swish R and L. Bear me bear with me, okay. Uh, this interesting thing is that, um, sorry, I think it's a uh, bypass by which L? Yes, I think it's here. So when you replace this with a switch R, this is, uh, I think they meant only, only with switch R, no switch L. They observed the modules with bypass connections such as a feed forward and a convex net tend to learn a large negative bias in the preceding linear layer to learn normally off behavior. And this is not a good behavior, okay? So they, they use the swoosh L. So swoosh L doesn't have this a large negative bias for these modules. Um, so, and they use the swoosh R for the, um, on, only use the swoosh L for these normally off modules. And they use the swoosh R for the convolution module and the rest that come in bed. Will make sense. I mean, you probably have to run the application study yourself to check those, uh, those biases. Those are, are interesting to me. Um, Encoder structure, no temporal down sampling. Uh, I think this is the third. And this means they are better than squeeze, squeeze former. No temporal down sampling, better than the conformer. Okay, this is explain why they are better than conformer. Because conformer, like I mentioned, that there's no temporal down sampling after they uh subsampling okay this is like uh five percent okay five percent job that's fine uh and and, the, and this one uh the first one the first one or maybe the fifth one is the normalization layer you can see there's no much difference this is even less than 5%, I think. Job. Makes sense. Um, and the, there is something interesting in the block structure. I, I am personally a, a QCI modeling guy. I like to see these ablation studies. Those results are interesting to me. But I didn't see much difference because everything here is like 5% uh, or less than 5%. Uh, first of all, they try to use uh, double conformer style blocks, uh, which means that um, 
they replace their multi-head attention weights with multi-head self-attention, okay? But uh, instead of the Macron that only has a, a one feet forward at the bottom, a one feet forward on the top, they have an, also another feet forward in the middle. Mm. But they, they still have the NLA, okay? The only thing is that the tension weights. Uh, so let, let's take a quick take a look at what's the diff might be, might be the difference here. The, the, there's no attention weight sharing, right? Your model gets more uh, complicated, right? Model model parameters get more, and uh, which basically your conformer model gets deeper, deepened uh, by almost a. Two times, okay. Can you safely say that your model size got two times bigger? And the, uh, where is it? Yeah. You can see that um, the model indeed gets worse. You see, more parameter gets worse. I think that's probably because the model overfitting. Mm. And then they say that if you do not use the nonlinear attention, so your model complexity gets uh, gets smaller. Uh, but because Dr. Povey mentioned that the NLA is supposed to capture the local the global dependency nla is for capturing the, the global de global dependency on speech sequence so i think this is essential uh, you, you may say that, oh, I, I think the self-attention is also capturing the global dependency. You're right. Um, but I think the point of this is, is that NLA has to work with attention weight sharing because if you do not use NLA, like you said, okay, how about I just use um, no NLA because my self-attention definitely captures the global information. I agree with you. But there's no attention weight sharing, and then your result gets worse, very worse. I think this is almost like a five percent. Okay, and this, uh, what I said is that if you do not use an LA, then based on this, then you further remove the no attention weight sharing, your result will get worse. Then you can see it go worse and worse. So you have to have them both. But I would say it would be interesting to see. And the double conformer style block, that means that there is an LA and that there is attention weights sharing. So I want to see the results that. There is attention weight sharing, but there's no NLA, but they don't have that result. Make sense? I want to see their double conformer style block without NLA. That would be interesting to me. But they won't be able to put every results on this because I really try to understand what the NLA does here. Um, because you can only see that, okay, uh, Okay, they probably shown this, but there's a conformer style. Okay, they probably have the no NLA one, right? Um, or how to say this? Um, I want to understand why they have these type of uh, structures in the NLA. For example, why they using this extra gating mechanism, right? Why they can just use 
can't use it as a K and V here. Right? That's more straightforward than what I think. If, I mean, if I were, I, I were them, I wouldn't use this gating factor. Uh, if you drop the gating back um, submodule, would the result getting worse? All right. Um, I think enough of the. Yeah, of course, no bypass is getting worse. Um, yeah, this is the appendix. This is a pseudocode of a uh, scale atom or the algorithm of. Uh, this is a comparison of their atom, a very detailed uh, comparison. Oh, this is uh, some uh, really trivial thing, in my personal opinion. There is something about how to uh, balance and whiten the activation. There are lots of math. I don't. I won't be be able to cover this. But definitely, this part. Is written by Dr. Dan Povit, but if you're interested in his thoughts, you definitely should read this part. This, this, these two parts, balancing the white whitener, including the scaled at that atom, the three parts are definitely written by Dr. Povit for sure. Those experiments, okay, those um, ablation studies. All right, I'll be stopping here. Uh, thanks so much for uh, uh, coming to our session. If you enjoyed our uh, detailed uh, paper reading, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and share our videos with your friends. Thank you so much.